In this video on solving basics for trig equations, we're going to look at the equation cosine theta equals negative square root 3 over 2. So as we look at this, something to keep in mind is that this process is going to be very similar to what we use when we find exact values. Um, we're just going to be working in the other direction. So a good tip is to think which angle or angles have a cosine of negative square root 3 over 2. That's really all this equation is asking us. So let's break down our process. And here's our outline. In step one, we'll analyze. So we'll figure out which quadrants our angles will be in. And we'll also use a reference triangle to determine the reference angle for these angles in each of the quadrants we chose. And step two is all about putting those two things together and stating your answers. Okay, so again, we're doing this for the equation cosine theta equals negative square root three over two. So we start with step one, analyzing and deciding which quadrants we should be working in. So what you want to do is think about the acronym ASTC, or All Students Take Classes is a good way to remember that. And this acronym tells you which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. And all you need to do is apply these labels to the quadrants. So start in quadrant one, ASTC. So we work our way around quadrant one all the way around to quadrant four. And Briefly, this tells you, again, which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So in quadrant one, the A tells you that they are all positive. In quadrant two, the S tells you that sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only positive trig functions. In quadrant three, the T tells you tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are positive. In quadrant four, that C tells you cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive. So looking back over to our equation, we see that we have cosine theta equals a negative value. Um, we don't really care what value, we just see that negative. So we need to be working in the quadrants that are negative for cosine values. So process of elimination, we see that they are all positive in quadrant one, can't be that. And the C in quadrant four tells us that cosine is positive there. So we can't be in quadrant four either. We must be in quadrant two and quadrant three. So let's go ahead and sketch in those terminal sides. So we'll be working to find the angles in quadrants two and three. And now we can go ahead and find the reference triangle that we're going to be working with. So if you aren't familiar with your special right triangles and how they work on the unit circle, I'll post a link to a playlist in the video description. Uh, go check out those videos on special right triangles in the unit circle. That'll help a lot here. Um, but when solving, let's go ahead and assume we have that knowledge to work with. Um, so quick reminder, we know that on the unit circle, the cosine is going to be the X coordinate or the horizontal leg of our special right triangles. And we also should know that square root three over two is that longer leg of those special right triangles. So we're dealing with the special right triangle here that has the 30 degree central angle. It's our 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And the angle we really care about is that central angle there, 30 degrees. And most often when we're solving a trig equation, we are actually going to want our answer in radians. So you can go ahead and work this problem through just using degrees, um, but we are going to go ahead and adjust this to pi over six radians. Um, again, that's equivalent to 30 degrees. And that's going to serve as our reference angle. And that's going to be this angle here so remember, reference angles just from terminal side rotating to x-axis. And so each of these reference angles for each of our angles is going to be pi over 6 radians. And that'll be really helpful for our next step. In step two, we're going to state our angle answers. And let's do that first for just the angles that are on the unit circle. And that's going to be those angles that are on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So let's start by naming our quadrant two angle. You may just know what angle in quadrant two has a reference angle of pi over six. So if you do, great, you've got that answer already. Let's quickly work through how to find that. We're trying to find this angle right here. We know if we rotated a half rotation, that would be pi, or write it as six pi over six to give it a common denominator to that reference angle. And we know that rotating to get to that angle that we want in quadrant two, we're rotating one pi over six less than pi. So just subtract six pi over six minus one pi over six. And that tells you that five pi over six is our angle in quadrant two. 
if you want, plug that back into the equation, double check yourself. In fact, the cosine of five pi over six is negative square root three over two. And that's hopefully helping you see the link from finding exact values. And we're just working backward here when solving an equation. So now to name our second angle answer, that's going to be the one in quadrant three. So we rotate more than a half rotation by one pi over six. So all we need to do there is add pi or six pi over six plus one pi over six. And that tells us that our quadrant three answer is going to be seven pi over six. And again, if you have a really comfortable working knowledge of the unit circle, you probably already know that the angle in quadrant three with a reference angle of pi over six is seven pi over six. So that's a great thing to be able to bring to the table when solving equations. All right, so these are our answers. Again, just substitute them back into the equation. That works for any trig equation um, to make sure you can double check your answers are correct. Um, so we would stop here if all we wanted to do was solve over this interval for our unit circle answers. But you also may be asked to solve this equation for all solutions. And you really just need a quick adjustment here in order to write your solution so that all solutions are included. And when we think about that, remember about coterminal angles. So five pi over six has many, infinitely many coterminal angles, and they just share the same terminal side. That's all coterminal means. So we want something to express that five pi over six and all its coterminal angles are solutions. And the same thing goes for seven pi over six. So here's how we're going to do this. Just two solutions equations. We'll start with five pi over six first. We're going to say that theta can be five pi over six plus two pi k. So this means five pi over six and all its coterminal angles. Breaking this down just a little bit, we use two pi because that's a full rotation. So you rotate all the way around back to the same terminal side. And k is just an integer. And so depending on what integer you substitute in for k, you can simplify and get an, a different coterminal angle, but all of those angles will be solutions to the above equation. All right, so let's write the second solutions equation. This time it'll be seven pi over six and all its coterminal angles. So just plus two pi k. And you may see this, sometimes people like to use n or another variable um, to represent all the integers. Uh, whatever you like to use is completely fine, but these two equations represent the solution um, for all solutions to that equation. Um, be sure to check out more worked examples. Links will be in the video description, or if you need help with any of those other basic topics, just be sure to check that as well. Thanks for watching.